Welcome to our broadcast of Destiny Talk with your host, Lady Cook, the talk show with a higher level of listening. Hear the things God speaks in his word, channel your inner strength, and charge your destiny with empowered living. So stay tuned for inspiration, motivation, and activation towards your destiny. This week's topic is Hallelujah Anyhow. Greetings to you, Destiny listeners. To God be the glory for another day, another chance, and another opportunity to declare his faithfulness. Sometimes we just need to release a shout of praise unto God because God is. And I know as you're listening to my voice, many of you probably thinking about different terms or or different ways that you can express how good God is to you. God is my everything. He certainly is. He is everything to me. And I'm thankful to be called his daughter, his beloved. I'm thankful to be found faithful in his sight. I bless God uh, out of my relationship with him and because he's so faithful to me. So I'm grateful to God. This evening, we're going to talk about that hallelujah anyhow. A hallelujah anyhow is a way to say, God, I bless you because I know what you have done for me. Yes, hallelujah anyhow says, God, you keep on making a way for me over and over again through danger seen and unseen. God, you've done it for me again. And you know, sometimes we just have to sit down and just reflect upon his goodness. And you know, we could have all kinds of things going on around us, you know, things on our jobs, in our homes, in the personal relationships. We could feel strains from all types of um, attacks of, uh, you know, against us in our flesh, in our, in our soul. Um, But God, it's, it's important for us to steal away and sit down. And I know when I put myself in a time out, it's usually that time that I need to have um, commune with God, where I need to um, be in my spiritual devotions, if you will. And so we have to have that time set aside where uh, we know that uh, we are drawing um, from the living water. We're drawing from the well that uh, fills us up, if you will, the well that will fill us and will keep us on track and will keep us reminded of who we are. It will remind us of our purpose and why we were created and what we are here um, on this earth to do. And that's to bring glory. We're here to bring glory to God. And so listen, our scripture of focus for this Sunday, it's a beautiful Sunday here in Columbia, South Carolina. And as always, I pray that um, you're experiencing the beauty um, of the splendor of our God. Uh, Any day that we're allowed to live and to breathe and to be above ground is a beautiful day. Somebody ought to say amen. It's a beautiful day. And so I'm thankful to God for being alive. Our scripture is coming from James 1 and 12, and it says, Blessed is the man who remains steadfast under trial, for when he has stood the test, he will receive the crown of life, which God has promised to those who love him. Oh, I love the Lord. I love God. Let's look at 2 Chronicles 31 and 12, and it says, I thank Christ Jesus our Lord who has strengthened me because he considered me faithful, putting me into service. You know, the more we give, the more God increases the blessings for you to receive. There's an open heaven that's available to all of us, just as it was available to those that we read about in the Bible. The open heaven of blessings, blessings that continuously flow for us. It's available 
it's available to us, even when we go through trials and, and sufferings. You got to look at the different, um, you know, ones that we read about in the Bible. If you look at Abraham and Job and Esther, uh, the woman at the well, even the woman with the alabaster box, all suffered, but yet they triumphed in receiving the blessings and the promises of God because of their faith because of their faith. And they were under the same open heaven that you and I are under today. We ought to praise God for his thankfulness and the gratitude of blessings that we receive because of his love for us. So we have to remain steadfast in the faith. We have to remain steadfast under trial because it's when we stand through that, when we stand through that, we know that we will receive the blessing from God because it's his word. And we know that God keeps his promises always. He keeps his promises, though the storms, they could rage in our life. We are to keep on praising God because we serve a covenant keeping God. We serve a covenant keeping God. And God reminds us that in times of our deepest trouble, that we can still put our faith in Jesus. Jesus. We can still put our faith there knowing that he has already won the battle. If we read in Romans 5 verses 3 and 4 says not only that, but we got to rejoice in our sufferings. Here it is right there. We've got to rejoice in those trials and temptations. We've got to rejoice knowing that suffering produces endurance. Yes, 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 it does. It produces endurance. It helps us to stand strong in the middle of that storm. When all hell is breaking out around you, when everything is going on all around about you, the word of the Lord says stand. And then not only does it say stand it says stay there and rejoice there rejoice in the sufferings and endurance because we know that the uh, suffering produces endurance and endurance produces character yes it will it produces your character it allows you to be able to go on and and and, and stand strong in the faith in the knowledge of knowing that God is going to deliver you through that thing he'll deliver you around that thing so God will get you over and it will produce your character. It will build, it builds your faith. It builds you up in the most holy faith of God. And then your character will recycle itself to continue to produce hope because you could think back, as I said earlier, you can reflect back and say, well, God, I can remember a time or I can remember during this time where I was, I was feeling this way or I didn't have a dime to my name. And God, I remember when you made a way out of no way. I remember when I was sick and I really thought that I was getting ready to leave this place. But God, God, you delivered me. So your character of knowing and speaking and walking and living in the faith of God will allow you to remember. And once you start to remember that thing, that thing starts to recycle over and over and over again in your soul. And as it recycles, come on here, somebody, it helps to keep on building that faith. It helps you to build that faith in almighty God. So we are to rejoice. We've got to rejoice in our sufferings. And we know that even when we praise God through it all and when we praise God through it, it builds our hope and our faith to know that God is, God can, and God will do it over and over again. Serving God places you under a continuous flow of blessings and um, it places you, it puts you in an, in an open door season is what I've been reflecting on here and what I've been encouraging all of those um, who have been following, uh, following me um, in the ministry. We've been talking um, for a few months now on the faithfulness of God and we've been talking about the open door season. You, um, you expect the door will open for you when you are in, in a faith, when you're reminded of the thankfulness of God. And then when you go to write that vision or you're writing out those prayers or you're asking God for the door to open for you, you are reminded, you are reminded that, it, you know, if it's in the will of God, and God, if this is for me, if this is if 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 this is the plan, Lord God, that you uh, have for me, if this is my purpose, Lord God, then I expect for this door to open for me. And that's taking God at his word. That's uh, calling his word back to mind. And that's putting his word into practice, if you will. 
Because we also know that the word of God does not return back void. So it will deliver. It will do just what it sets out to accomplish to be done because it's his word. Because it's his word. Hallelujah. So I thank God for the word of God. I thank God for it because it is life and it is living and it's active. Um, and, 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 it, and it makes a way and it delivers and it does all those things that we expect for it to do that we know that it will do. So that's why we encourage you week after week to get into the word of God. Make the word of God active in your life. Make it active in your life. And how do you do that? In prayer, devotion time, sitting before God, just reading his word. And as the Bible say, meditating on it day in and day in day in and day out. Let that thing come alive in you. Let the word of God become alive in you. And here's what I want to empower you with for this uh, upcoming week. I want you to be empowered to know that you can praise God beyond it. No matter what it looks like, just go ahead and keep on praising God beyond it. Listen, um, Ephesians 1 and 4 Ephesians 1 and 4 places great love um, and focus on how uh, of what God of how much God loves you, if you will, uh, how much he loves you and and the purpose um, in which you were created. If you read the um, the first chapter of Ephesians where Paul is writing, is telling, you know, uh, you know, encouraging us to know how much God loves us and how much he thought, you know, what he thought of us that we were even thought of before the foundations of the world. And if you look at focusing in on verse four, if you look at Ephesians one and four, It says, even before he made the world, God loved us and chose us in Christ to be holy and without fault in his eyes. God looks at you and loves you as his masterpiece. And so that's enough to go ahead and praise God beyond whatever circumstances, situational uh, circumstances that's trying to beat you down and cause you to think negative or to feel like you're not worthy enough. There it is right there in the Bible. Just go to the book of Ephesians, the first chapter, and just read about his great love for us. We can't let certain things, we can't let people, we can't let anybody pull us out of, out of knowing our purpose and why we were created to stop us from relishing in the beauty of God, in the beauty of why you were created. So we've got to praise him through it all. We've got to praise him beyond it, beyond what we know, beyond what we see. Listen, praise put our focus on God. He it puts our focus on God. And once you start to praise him, then listen, worship is released. Worship is released in your heart. Worship is released so that um, you will know John 4 and 24 says that they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Listen, it is impossible to know the will of God without true worship. We've got to worship God. We've got to praise him beyond what it looks like. Praise also um, gives you a greater uh, sense of your identity. It helps to build your self-esteem. It, it, you know, it enriches your, um, you know, your sense of, of, of your spiritual and, 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 and mental and emotional. Oh, God, we need some help with our emotions. But, it, you know, once we start to praise God, it puts all of that into balance. It balances everything out for the believer. So praise helps to balance us. Praise reminds us of how powerful God is. Oh, I hope that you are getting this um, and I hope that you are writing, uh, you know, the scriptures down or writing whatever, um, you know, that, you know, is being laid on your heart that will help you go ahead and focus in and and help you, you know, get in the in the right frame of mind as you're getting ready to prepare for your week ahead. It's good to know these things. It's good to write out the scriptures and write out the things that Holy Spirit speaks to your heart. Listen, let's go to Psalm 8 verse 1. Psalm 8 and verse 1 says, O Lord, our Lord, your majestic, your your majestic name fills the earth. Your glory is higher than the heavens. We're talking about a mighty God, 
a glorious God. And even as I read that, I throw my hands up. I lift my voice. I lift my hands to almighty God. It says, your oh Lord, our God, how majestic, how wonderful, how great, how mighty is your name in all of the earth. Oh my God. So praise, listen to me, listen to me here. You've got to, you know, even in the middle of it, if you have to walk away from your desk, if you have to go to your car on your lunch break, whatever it takes for you to, you know, to, to refocus, if you will, and whatever it takes for you to align your, 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 your mind, your, your will and your body to, to, to remind yourself of the goodness of God that balances things out that puts you in a place to say, God, I know what I'm facing. Oh, but because of your grace and your mercy. Oh, but because of the blessings. Oh, but because I am your child. Oh, but because your word tells me and instructs me that if I have faith to believe that nothing is impossible with you, oh Lord. So Lord, I praise you in advance. Come on here, somebody. I praise you in advance, Lord God. And I know, Lord God, that the end and result of this thing, that the end and result will be that I will have the victory. Oh God, you're going to bless me, Lord God. You're going to bless me beyond what I see. You will bless me beyond what I see. So praise strengthens your faith. Praise strengthen your faith. And that's, uh, we can tell in Romans four and 20, it says, um, Abraham says, uh, that Abraham grew strong and was empowered by faith. And so he gave praise and glory to God. Abraham grew strong and was empowered by faith because God continued to make a way and make sure his promises. He delivered on his word, made sure his promises to Abraham, the father of faith, the father of the nations. So I am just so thankful to God. I'm so joyful to God. I'm joyful to him and I bless his name. I look at first Thessalonians 5, 16 through 18. Here's another good verse for you uh, for this week. First Thessalonians 5, 16 through 18 says, be joyful always. Pray continually. Give thanks in all circumstances for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. So I hope that you caught that. It said, give thanks in all circumstances, in all situations. Thankfulness should be a way of life for us, naturally flowing from our mouths and our hearts. It should be that fountain. It should be that fountain. The thing of, of thanksgiving, thankfulness should be where we um, talk about our testimonies um, and witness to others of the beauty of God, where God has brought you from and the importance of being able to um, praise and worship um, God. We don't, you know, just, just do it out of, out of the abundance of your heart, out of the abundance of your heart. Uh, We should be thankful because God is worthy of our thankfulness. He is worthy. And so it is only right to give credit to him, you know, where, where, where it is due to give honor to him, if you will, to give honor to him where it is due. Um, uh, when uh, James one and 17 says, when we are thankful, it, 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 if our focus moves from off of our selfish desires, um, off of the pain of, of any current situations or circumstances that you could be in the middle of. And, um, it puts the focus again on God. It puts the focus on him. And so I want to encourage you for your week ahead to give thanks, give thanks, be joyful, always pray continuously, give thanks in all circumstances because he is worthy of the praise and he will continue to place you um, under the fountain of blessings for blessings to reign supreme over your life. Well, I hope you have enjoyed this broadcast on this beautiful Sunday and I wish you joy, peace, and love, happiness in all that you do on this upcoming week. God bless you. Well, 
I hope you have enjoyed listening to Destiny Talk. You can find out additional information about the Lady Cook Ministries from our website. You can find out how you can book Lady Cook to be your keynote, inspirational and motivational speaker for worship services, revivals, seminars, or conferences. Visit the website at www.ladycookministries.org. Until next week, be blessed.